So this is um, one reason not to buy a Chinese still, um, since some people have been putting a, making bids on, on buying, buying Chinese product and to a greater extent there's nothing wrong with it. Um, some of it can be quite well made, reasonably well made, um, but the problem is when you, um, if either in the States or New Zealand or wherever you are, rather than buying someone from someone local, um, you buy something from, from China, it arrives on your doorstep, there's something wrong with it, the, uh, the attitude is a fairly lackluster. This is a, a client of mine who bought a, um, bought a kegel off me, uh, the whole, whole um, base boiler kind of unit, and he uh, bought the uh, column off uh, a Chinese company because they're obviously a bit cheaper than me, I, I can't work for Chinese labour rates. Um, and he's just trying to get the best bang he can for his buck, so power to him. Reflux condenser, and there, I don't know if you can see it there, there is a, uh, where they've buffed, it, buffed the weld right back, which I don't buff my back, buff my welds back. Um, they've busted through the weld into the tube, and there's a, a dirty great leak coming straight through there. Uh, I've offered to fix it for him, because uh, the Chinese attitude was, well, you send it back to us at your own your own expense, and if we can find something wrong with it, we'll see what we can do about fixing it. I'm basically just going to uh, fusion weld around the outside here, uh, and and seam those two parts up, the, the baffle and the cooling tube there. Um, it's just not a very big job at all, um, and that should uh, have the thing running nicely. From I'll just have to buff it, give it a quick buff back with some some um, wool to bring it up nice and bright. So that's all I had to do there. I just um, run a bit of a fusion weld around the around the outside there to, to blend the uh, cooling tube and the um, baffle back in together. Just around that half of the the tube. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll just put a, a, a buff on and um, just uh, buff it back to bright steel and get rid of the pin pin mark they put on there. And um, yeah, I don't grind my welds back generally. Um, the old adage amongst uh, welding folk that uh, if you've got to grind your welds, you're not a welder, you're a grinder. <laughs> um, and I just find that they add more strength. They're there, they're there to add meat into the, into the equation. Um, why go and put a weld on and then grind it all back? I know it, it's aesthetic and it's pretty and all the rest of it, but um, they're also very functional. They're there for a damn reason. Uh, this is another another little goodie I've got from China. Um, I've been asked to um, correct the, the cant on this, so you probably can't see the square and whatnot from there. But um, the angle between here and here is not 90 degrees. It's way way out. Let's see if I can get that square on. You might better get an idea of it. No. Anyway, um, I was asked if I could square square that up, um, and I've def finally deferred to do that because um, the only way I can figure of doing that is getting myself um, a massive bar that will fit just inside the two-inch ferrule here, and then just use some brute force and ignorance. Um, I wouldn't even go far as some love nudges, just brute force and ignorance slowly and crank it back in, but um, in doing that there's the possibility that you're going to bend something in here or, or, or deform deform around the outside of this this inlet um, and that's just going to open a can of worms that is not my can. Um, 
not being mean or anything. It's just it's come from China for a very cheap price. Um, I can't fix that without potentially causing damage that's going to uh, escalate, and and I'll be responsible for that. Um, you can't uh, can't very well heat stainless up either to bend it like you can with other steel. You can heat it up red hot makes it very, very malleable and you just basically um, wiggle it into, well, bend it, pinch it into place. Um, you can't do that with stainless. Your heat stainless at work hardens, even if you've got a tool on it, drilling it or grinding it or whatever, you, uh, it gets hot and then it work hardens and you make more of a mission for yourself. So um, heating this up is just going to make it harder, hotter, uh, and eventually if you get things to the point where they're red hot like you'd be able to just move regular steel like toothpaste this stuff t starts you start sweating some of the alloy components out of the out of the metal and you get the sugaring um, I think I've talked about in other videos where you apply heat to it without the argon shield um, intense heat to it without the argon shield and you can actually start uh, you'll, you'll get the uh, alloy, alloy components and stuff coming out I used to work out in China at one stage, believe it or not. I uh, was doing QC quality control and, and checking uh, production lines for, for Western companies. And this sort of thing is pretty typical. Um, there's two, oh, I don't know, a whole bunch of ways this could have come out, really. But the uh, first two that come to mind is one, they've got a jig here, and the jig's been made on the piss, and they're just feeding parts into it, and they're coming out the other end um, misaligned because you know, they're just doing it every time. Uh, if if um, any aren't familiar with what I'm talking about with a jig, a jig is just a tool that holds things in location while you weld them or do something with them. Just to facilitates manufacturing so you get a, an identical part assembled every time. Um, makes life easy for people on, on production lines. Well, this jig was either on the piss or... The other thing is, um, it might be bad practice with the welding because stainless welding um, will pinch and pull. So if you start welding, for instance, started welding here, tagged it here, or did a small weld here, it would pull in on that side. And if you didn't correct it and, and align it properly before you went on and welded somewhere else, you'd have that thing set with this initial slight pull. And that's possibly what's going on as well. No one's explained that to the welder. Um, uh, or whoever set this up, I'm not sure whether it would have been machine done or um, they've got little 100 low sitting on a, a concrete floor somewhere polishing the crap out of these afterwards. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of crazy stuff that takes place in, in Chinese factories. Um, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Uh, but yeah, um, it's another example of something that's come, come from China. Quite nice production values in, in terms of the polishing and the amount of because the labour is so cheap, they can go nuts and, and just buff the crap out of stuff. But then you get the problem that you saw in the previous item where that baffle had been buffed out of that reflux condenser to the point that it was leaking. Um, yeah, just, just madness ensues. So uh, that's another another item that came from China that I've been asked to fix. Yeah. Okay, catch you guys later.